welcome back to the channel this week. We're doing something a little bit different. Basically, I'm out from behind that stupid desk of mine, and I'm out shooting. Uh, the weather hasn't been great. We've been getting a lot of gray skies. Not what I'm really looking forward to. But uh, I'm using my MP240, and I've got my dad's 28 millimeter Elmerit from 19... 68 I gotta say somewhere in that range and it's got that extended um, rear element that that goes into the camera so things are a little bit different with it but I really enjoy this camera and lens setup because uh, it just it I don't know it's got that special feel to it plus it's my dad's lens and I really enjoy using it for that reason alone but what I'm going to show you today is, is uh, I'm using a different viewfinder. I know I could use the viewfinder in the camera uh, because it does a 28 millimeter um, frame line. The problem with it is, is that I can't do that with this lens because the frame lines don't show up, unfortunately. So I can't use that. So I, a couple of years ago, I purchased a Rico GR viewfinder for 21 and 28. So it has the frame lines for the 21 and the 28. And it's great. But as you know, with, with the M series cameras um, around 2015, unfortunately, especially the M240, um, <clears throat> it has to have that little slot on the back for the, uh, what do you call it, for the, the viewfinder, the the EVF that fits on the top. So unfortunately that's open when I use this, but it's really pretty accurate even though it, it's offset a little bit, even from the cold, the, the, the hot shoe on the top. But uh, today I'm out shooting with uh, the camera in black and white and raw mode, and I'm able to you know, visualize things a little bit different because I'm looking for light and shadow. And I'll take you along and show you a few images that I shot. The first one I didn't bring you along with, but I'm going to show it to you anyway. So here's the first shot that I told you about. The bow pointing up in the air is what drew me in. The name of this boat, Tiny Tuna, lying face down here with the traps on top of it. And I really envisioned this as a black and white, but I kind of like the color one as well because there's a lot of color to it. So let's get out of the car and roam around. It's going to be a lot of fun. So we're over at Lane's Cove, and I got to tell you, this is a pretty interesting place. It really is fisherman's paradise here, and um, I'm just looking for some something different. And right now, there's a lot of reeds out here, but it's kind of wet. Let's see what I'm talking about. There's a lot of reeds and a lot of wet. Let's see if I can find some place to walk through here where I'm not going to get soaked. <laughs> it's pretty wet. Uh, but there might be some interesting pictures in here. You can see right over here there's some uh, some rope. Got the reeds here and in the background you got the shack. You never know. Might get something interesting. You know, I always forget to bring my glasses with me. <laughs> so I can't really look at the back of the camera and figure out what's going on. But got an interesting shot here, as well as getting my feet kind of wet. So the shot I got lined up here is a vertical. And uh, it includes this rope in the foreground here. Now let me show you the camera I'm using. Crazy viewfinder on the top. And it really works very well. It's kind of cool. The shot that I'm taking includes this rope here. And then goes up like this and gets the shack in the background. So it's kind of cool. So I'm using an f-stop of f8 and my exposure at ISO 200 is somewhere around to around 500th of a second at f8. Uh, I know that f8 is going to carry me right up and around here in that area right there which is kind of makes a lot of sense but I don't think it's going to carry to the background. Well, I was right. You can tell that the uh, depth of field doesn't go much past where I pointed out, which is where the reeds kind of stop. But I don't mind the background being a little bit out of focus. So, uh, I'll tell you, this is really kind of a cool place. Let's see if we can find some more pictures. I'm playing around with depth of field here at F11, 
and seeing how close I can get to front to back in focus now uh, or acceptably in focus I should say and I'm telling you a foot difference in where you focus is making a really big difference and uh, you know maybe I'll show them to you on the screen how you know varying the focus from place to place really made a huge difference now I focused you know very close to the foreground and the background is way out now I focused maybe like maybe four feet or three feet in and <laughs> big difference so this is the foreground here so we're, and we're focusing out and around here like that and back in here and this line here is taking you out to the breakwater out there and it's it's a it's gonna be a cool black and white and I can't wait to do it just wish there was some something in the sky to photograph but we focused on this little pool in here and we focused out a little bit further and then in here. So we'll show you a bunch of different shots. Look at these two images here. And we're gonna look at the depth of field issue at F11. Now you can see that the image on the right is way sharper in the foreground than this image on the left. Uh, this image on the left was focused up around here where these two little, um, where these two little things are right here. And this image was focused on right here. And we're, we're not talking about a huge difference in focus here. We're only talking about two feet. This is about two feet worth of difference. But you can see as we get up here as front to back, um, this image on the right stops right about here, right about where this line is of, of uh, grass that is, you know, from here on, it's out of focus. But this one goes up almost to the rocks here. You know, moves about, what, two feet or so. But you can see that the background is more acceptably in focus than this image on the right. Although I like this image on the right a lot better because this foreground is really sharp. Look at this down here. It's just really sharp. And over here, yeah, it's not. I don't think I, you know, it, it's, it's, it's possible that I was focusing a little bit closer to me down in here somewhere, maybe on this bright spot right here. Um, but I can't remember exactly what I did. I know for this one, I focused out here more. So here's the image that I picked. And uh, I picked the one obviously with the real sharp foreground. And here's the black and white alternative. Let me know what you think of whether or not you like the black and white version or the color version. We're coming up to another nice shot here. And by the way, the the lobstermen are just waiting for the whales to go by so they can launch their gear. So there is gear everywhere. Absolutely everywhere. It's uh, <laughs> there's a lot of lobster traps everywhere. So we're going to make a little shot here and see a black and white opportunity. This is granite post here. You can see the rocks are discolored. We got some really great um, iron hanging out of the the edge here. So this might make a good shot here. Let's see what we got. Let's hope it's not slippery. I don't want to go for a swim. Now we got another nice element here that might lead us out to this lobster boat here. And that is this white line. You can see how right here we got this piece of chain going out to a white line. Got it leading right out to what? A lobster boat right over in here. Now, I also, I don't care really here if uh, the lobster boat's out of focus, it doesn't really matter to me. I want this stuff in front, nice and sharp. So one of the things that I don't talk about a lot is uh, shapes in an image. And in this is kind of a Z going on between the iron on the left, down the chain, out the rope to the lobster boat, and then back out to the horizon with the uh, wall in the background and like the other one let me know what you think do you like the color version or the black and white version well we got another cool shot here um, some rope and some chain intertwined might make a cool picture so see how this line is all intertwined here and we got this crack right got this crack going right up here like this making a nice V out of this 
and the ropes kind of twirled around another shot at f11 just trying to get a, as much of it as in focus you know right from right down here from right down here all the way out in this image i really like the color version more than the black and white version it just has so much more character to it uh, the problems that i see right now the problems i see with this using this particular viewfinder on this camera is is that unfortunately uh in vertical you've got to compensate a little bit you know after you see the first one you're going oh i gotta move this down for some reason it uh, and i understand why because it's a little offset so unfortunately i have to lower my horizon a little bit to make it all line up but hey it's just an experiment and it was real cheap you know the 28 millimeter leica viewfinder that i have is unfortunately uh, kind of foggy and not great and i don't know it might be able to get fixed i don't know we'll see well of course on the way out i noticed something really cool look at this that's kind of neat i think what really drew me to this subject here is all the amazing detail in it and again i like the color version better than the black and white uh, because maybe the blue uh, a little bit of blue sparkled in there with the yellow and stuff. Hey, thanks for dropping by the channel today. I had a great time out at Lanes Cove using my Leica MP240 and the Leica 28 Elmeret 2.8. And we're experimenting with doing some good old-fashioned depth of field work and figuring out what was in focus at f11 and how close you had to focus to get as much in the background as in focus. So it worked out pretty well. I had a good time doing it. I used the, the Ricoh GR1 or 2, one of those. It has the 21 and 28 millimeter frame lines on it. The problem was is that shooting vertically, it's unfortunately off a little bit at the top just because it's an offset um, uh, viewfinder for the GR cameras, the Ricoh GR cameras, because uh, they had to make room for the flash going up and down or whatever it was. So anyway, um, I had a great time with this, and if you wouldn't mind, please like and subscribe and comment on whether you like the color version or the black and white version. I'm really glad that I went with raw and black and white, even though I was looking for black and whites, I found some color versions that were pretty nice too. So I'm glad I used the raw. I had the raws available to me. So that's it for this week. And remember, it's not what you photograph, it's how you photograph it. And we'll catch you next time.